We have built a modern paraconical pendulum for the 21st century. Suchiava Planetarium, December 2007. This is an ideal experimental location. The people here love science. First, we look at the pendulum separated from the rest of the apparatus. Uh, this, uh, the top end is shaped as a wing, not like the, uh, the uh, Allies uh, C shaped uh, arrangement. The middle has a pendulum or quaker, which is for adjustment, uh, and the bottom end is the Bolinici bob, which as you can see is shaped as a flying saucer or a discus. So when operating, the pendulum is swinging like this. Whoosh, quite heavy, 22 kilos. Now we'll see these actions in detail. First, the pusher. Here it is, as seen from the other side. Uh, you see that uh, first it lifts up. Here it goes. And now it extends like this. Uh, and uh, it pushes the bob steadily to one side until it's out of the uh, frame. Uh, and you can see the uh, um, carriage now coming into contact with the micro switch, upon which the pushing action stops uh, right now. This is the other edge of the bob, which has a pin on it. The pin is now coming up into the latch, being pushed by the pusher, which you can't see. Uh, it's now in position, ready for the latch to be cocked, which uh, is going to happen in a moment. Here we go, the latch now cocks, and now the puller, pusher pulls back, and uh, there we are, ready to release. Here you see this progress from the other side. Now we see the pusher retract, and uh, it uh, pulls back leaving the bob hooked on the latch and uh, when it's uh, fully retracted it's not happening in a moment the uh, pusher drops and uh, then we're ready to release the bob here we go the, now the drop can get out of the way now we'll see the all important release process up close it's going to release in a moment to and fro, to and fro we go it comes back pretty precisely. This is so good, I think we'll show it again from the other side. And now it releases. Here we go. To and fro, to and fro, to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. Now we can see the entire swinging process. As the pendulum swings to and fro, and it actually goes to and fro for ten minutes, but I won't inflict that on you, uh, various sensors measure its movement and uh, produce voluminous uh, files stored on the computer. Then a brake operates and stops the pendulum, like this, and uh, this is what we'll show you next. Now you can see the pendulum swinging as a whole. The pendulotor quater in the middle, the adjustment device, is prominent. The brake is at the top of the pendulum, acting on the bottom of the wing. The brake is designed like the claw on a crab. It grips the pendulum smartly, uh, positively, but not abruptly. And as you see, the pendulum stops fairly quickly and convincingly. The brake then opens again uh, to conclude the operation. The entire system is controlled by a very low power NEC LAVI microcomputer via a bunch of fidget boards and a custom built UPS with a big battery bank. Power off endurance is about 72 hours. The ball suspension is the heart of the paraconical pendulum but it's rather hard to photograph. This ultra precise suspension ball is spherical to an accuracy of 120 nanometers and the flat upon which it oscillates is of a similar quality. Our support is very heavy and rigid but it's still transportable. Here you can see it under construction. Basically it's a tripod, three meters high, made from 15 centimeter aluminium tubes. This is the finished form with the pendulum hanging on it, but without any electronics. 
and this simplifies the overall view. Here in Suchiava Planetarium, the tripod is enclosed in a little room and is further shielded from air movement by a plastic hood. Finally, the sensors. We have two very high accuracy Kiemps LKG laser rangefinder sensors, which are accurate to closer than one micrometer. They look at the pendulum rod sideways, one near the end of the pendulum's elliptical path to measure the precession, and one near the middle to measure the minor axis. Here you see the laser spots on the target as the pendulum oscillates. We can also measure the azimuth angle of the ring, a very important parameter. A laser beam is reflected by a mirror fixed on the upper part of the ring and impinges upon a Hamamatsu position sensitive detector housed in a light hood. We can measure the angle of the wing to about 10 minutes of arc in this way. The equipment has been working faultlessly since 12 December and we plan to continue for an initial run of one month. Here's a sample of the results we are getting. These charts show wing angle, precession and minor axis at minutes 1, 2, etc. up to 10. It's clear that these parameters are intimately related. All the results will be posted on the internet in due course. We are looking forward to the solar eclipse on 1 August 2008. This is a partial eclipse here in Romania, and we think we're in a good location to have a chance of observing any allies effect that may occur. Thank you for watching. I leave you with a traditional Romanian eclipse motif.